Not many places in the world have so many famous areas in such a limited space as does the Bay of Naples. It is full of history, art and culture, all in an extraordinarily beautiful setting. Our journey begins in Naples, a city with a thousand faces whose praises have been sung throughout the world. The most celebrated panorama can be enjoyed from Via Orazio. Beneath us is the Mergellina port, animated with hundreds of boats and the uninterrupted traffic of hydrofoils taking visitors to every part of the Gulf. Further on is another port, Santa Lucia, with famous hotels lining the Via Caracciolo. Finally, there is a symbol of the history of the city, the Castel de Lorro, a splendid medieval castle that is perfectly preserved like many other monuments in the city. Here we are in Piazza Trieste and Trento, the heart of the city. There is Via Chiaia with the Gambrinus, the most famous café in Naples and a favourite haunt of artists and intellectuals. This is the Galleria Umberto I, an important meeting place for Neapolitans. This majestic solemn structure rivals the splendour and elegance of the Galleria in Milan. Just in front of us is the famous San Carlo Opera House, inaugurated in 1737 and still one of the leading theatres in the world. Piazza del Plebiscito is one of the largest and most imposing in Italy. It is dominated by the splendid Palazzo Reale, the residence of the Bourbons until 1860. The facade is spectacular and the sumptuous interior is embellished with numerous frescoes and other works of art. There are many other places worth visiting in this magical city, including the Museo Nazionale, which houses one of the world's most important collections of ancient Roman art. Many of the works are from the excavations in Herculaneum and Pompeii, while others come from the former collections of the Farnese family. Another large castle dominates the centre of the city, facing the port. It was built by Charles I Anjou and rebuilt in 1442 by Alfonso d'Aragona. The Castel Nuovo, commonly called the Maschio Angioino, is still one of the symbols of the city. It is imposing and perfect in its powerful medieval style. A 
short distance from the Maschio Angioino is the Piazza del Municipio with the Carthusian Monastery of San Martino. An imposing historical column stands in Piazza del Gesù Nuovo, next to one of Naples' favorite churches, the Basilica di Santa Chiara. Its interior is in the Romanesque style and its famous cloister is decorated with maiolica. Another of the city's pearls is the 18th century Reggio di Capodimonte, with its world-famous ceramics factory. We end our visit to this marvellous city in one of the most intimate enchanting spots, the beach at Mare Chiaro, where the celebrated view of the Gulf and Vesuvius never fails to amaze the visitor. It is the place where the well-known Fenistella, by one of its most renowned poets, Salvatore di Giacomo, represents another legendary aspect of Naples, its music. The fame of the Bay of Naples is not restricted to a visit to the city. There are other famous places nearby that will please any visitor. One of the most celebrated excursions is to Vesuvius, especially to the ancient city buried by a tremendous volcanic eruption 2,000 years ago, Pompeii. Life there was halted in time by the terrible eruption of Vesuvius in 79 AD. But the city, once one of the most splendid and flourishing in southern Italy, has preserved a miraculously intact image through the centuries. Today, after a series of exceptional restorations, it displays all the magnificence, art and technology of a world that seemed lost forever. There is the Temple of Apollo. The Basilica.
and the huge forum dominated by the Temple of Jupiter. And then there are the baths, which were much frequented at that time. The temples dedicated to various gods. Two superb theatres where plays, ballets and musical spectacles were performed. The immense amphitheatre saw the Pompeians cheer for their favourites. Above all, there are the legendary dwellings that, after centuries of restoration, offer a unique, wonderful experience of life in a distant world. The House of the Fawn, with its renowned statue of a dancing fawn, was one of the largest and most luxurious in the city. The dwelling was adorned with extraordinary works of art, including the famous mosaic that covers an entire room. It depicts one of the battles in which Alexander the Great defeated the Persian king Darius. This remarkable masterpiece is made of millions of pieces of small colored tesserae. Another famous dwelling is the house of the Veti, that belonged to two very rich freed slaves, who became wealthy merchants. The villa is extraordinarily well preserved and contains some of the most beautiful frescoes in the city. Finally, we come to the most famous spot, the Villa dei Misteri, a large suburban dwelling located north of the city in a splendid panoramic position. At the time of the catastrophe, it had been transformed into a large commercial farm. What has made the villa famous throughout the world are its frescoes. The most famous consists of one of the most extraordinary painted murals from antiquity. They represent an amazing spectacle covering three walls that portrays the important moments of a sacred ceremony related to the cult in honor of Dionysus. We resume our journey in Sorrento, another town that is world-renowned. Looking out over the deep blue sea, it is surrounded by olive and orange groves 
and has one of the most imposing tourist and hotel structures in Italy. Legend says the town was the home of the mythical sirens and it still preserves interesting memories of its ancient history. But what strikes the visitor most is the extraordinary air you breathe here in a climate of peace and beauty that merits its nickname of graceful. Continuing our journey, we enter another legendary coastal area, that of Amalfi. It consists of 50 kilometers of narrow, tortuous roads, built, like many other important works around the Bay of Naples, by the enlightened Bourbon kings who ruled Naples for more than a century. Our first stop is Positano, one of the most famous towns. Just a handful of colorful houses atop a high cliff that plunges down into the sea. to Ravello, a tiny but spectacular town. It was founded most probably in the 6th century, but reached the height of its splendor in 1200. The place certainly merits its fame. Its stupendous location, 350 meters above sea level, ensures a fresh, healthy climate, combined with a very special atmosphere of peace and tranquility. Its churches, including the cathedral from the 11th century, provide a touch of art and antiquity, and its extraordinary villas indicate the importance and wealth it achieved while offering visitors one of the most extraordinary panoramas in Italy. Here we are at Villa Ruffolo, which dates from the late 13th century and is adorned with towers and cloisters in Arab Sicilian style. The villa offers even more exciting images. There is a marvelous hanging garden facing the sea and a breathtaking panorama. It even bewitched Richard Wagner, to whom a local music festival is devoted. He found inspiration here for several of his immortal operas. Of course, you can't visit the Bay of Naples without a visit to the famous islands nearby. We are flying now over the most famous one, Capri, a small island, but one that is so beautiful it has been visited and loved by the most famous people in the world.
we'll begin our tour at its most famous spot, the Blue Grotto. Returning to the port, we take the cable railway to another legendary stopping place for the jet set, Piazza Umberto I, the renowned Piazzetta, that has been called the theatre of the world. The best thing to do is to avoid the crowds of tourists and walk up the charming narrow streets that lead to new discoveries. There's the Castle of Castiglione. There is also the Charter House of San Giacomo. So comparo de stelle a prima se. We can find a moment of peace in the gardens of Augustus with the steep Via Krupp leading down to the Piccola Marina. Luce mezzo mara. Our visit ends with a splendid ride in a chairlift to the highest point on the island, Monte Solaro, where we have a spectacular view of the island and another of its symbols, the Caraglioni rocks rising from the sea. Luna, 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 Luna,